I'm requesting one of you to give us a prayer. One of you to give us a prayer and then we start. Yes, uh, uh, Dove. Oh Lord, my dear, let's humble ourselves for a word of prayer. Oh Lord, my dear Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you for the gift of parents, teachers, friends, guidance, and relatives. Lord, my dear Father, thank you for the fact that you have brought us through the night, Lord, my dear Father. I thank you for the fact that you have enabled us to sit here or to stand wherever we are, Lord, my dear let you have enabled us to come and listen, Lord, my dear Father, open our ears, open our minds, open our hearts, and we understand everything, Lord, my dear Father, and may we, and may you continue blessing us, and our parents who endeavor to help us get education, Lord, my dear Father, please protect us, Lord, my dear Father, through this pandemic, Lord, my dear Father, so we continue guiding us, protecting us, so that, so that we may be able to get back to school very soon. Right. Amen. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Tangaza, for the prayer. I know we're now blessed. Um, the last uh, uh, lesson we had, we were still looking at uh, transport in uh, uh, in plants. And I, I beg that uh, we closely follow this because uh, it has applications and uh, there are questions um, in your practicals that can be set in this area. And then uh, it also involves uh, some bit of graph work that uh, briefly will uh, make comments on. So we, last time we tried to look at uh, um, Osmosis in 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 plants, osmosis in animals, especially animal cells and plant cells. Um, trying to understand what happens when you place an animal tissue or a plant tissue in a uh, in a in a solution. Somebody has a hand up. Um, I don't know what is the question. Okay, I think she had forgotten her hand. So um, we try to see, we try to understand what happens when you place an animal tissue or a plant tissue in a, uh, in a solution uh, with regard to the movement of uh, water molecules, whether the tissue gains water molecules or loses water molecules, and the effect of that on the tissue or on the cell. When uh, a cell gains water, uh, if it is animal cell, it expands, eventually it may burst, as compared to plant cells that may gain water and they may not necessarily burst because of uh, um, and the cell, uh, cell loss, cell wall, which is rigid. And then we also try to demonstrate um, an exper uh, experiment to bring out the idea of uh, plasmolysis and the target pressure or tazidity. In uh, as we are moving uh, uh, along with persons that. Uh, could be there that uh, we may come across. Somebody who would like to remind us of these three types of uh, solutions that we talked about. Yes, Daphne? Hypertonic, hypotonic, mm -hmm. and isotonic. Yes, hypertonic, hypotonic, and isotonic. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, anyone who would like to define one of them? What is a hypertonic solution? Yes, Daphne? Uh, a hypertonic solution is a high concentration, is one which has a high concentration than the tissue put in it. Good. And then a hypotonic. Hypotonic, hypotonic solution? Hypotonic. Yes, uh, um, yes, Zofia. Hypotonic solution is a solution that is less 
concentrate with them that's well. Okay, and then uh, uh, finally we have uh, isotonic. That is uh, uh, Enzo. Enzo, I would like sure. to define. Isotonic solution is one where its concentration is similar to the tissue being placed in it. Yeah, very good. Um, so those uh, those could be investigated in the lab. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, please. May I please um, repeat the, the definition? The definition of who? Of the first one of high. Hyper. Hypertonic. Hypertonic? Yes, teacher. Okay, let me throw it back to the class. Anyone who would like to repeat the definition of hypertonic solution? Anybody? Hypertonic solution is a solution that is more concentrated than a tissue. Okay. Hyper. It has a higher concentration than that of the tissues that are placed in it. And then the hypo is the opposite. Um, and then uh, you remember we added uh, we added the data, uh, which was actually our result, and the, this data was in form of figures. And the in uh, in. Uh, in uh, biology, you're going to find many of these uh, uh, many of these figures or results that are there, and it is important that you get to know how to handle these uh, uh, results. You could be asked to manipulate uh, these results in terms of uh, uh, graph work. I'm trying to take us to. Can you see my slide? Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. okay. That is uh, those were the results that we 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 saw, and uh, we extensively looked at it and uh, we tried to interpret it. Um, you now need. I now need to at this point indicate that. Uh, those results that we, we observed, which you can get in the lab, uh, can be handled graphically. And the graph, uh, uh, using graphs is a, a, one of the best ways of uh, analyzing data. And uh, this is not to be something new to you. For example, by the time you, uh, uh, mommy was released with you from the hospital, they gave her a, um, uh, a medical uh, uh, card, which eventually was used to collect data about you. Each time mommy took you to hospital, there was some measurement taken, then that was uh, uh, plotted. And it gave an indication of uh, how, how much you are growing, whether you are growing or not. Um, in a similar way, when the president was talking about uh, the, um, the performance of COVID, the infection of COVID, uh, to a large extent, he was using graph work uh, to track uh, the, 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 the prevalence of COVID. And then comparing that with the, uh, the, the prevalence in other, uh, in other uh, countries, meaning that figures were translated into, into graph work. And the other departments also use graph work. Uh, for example, I remember the, the minister for, um, the finance minister using this uh, commonly to reflect the performance of uh, the country. So graph work has been used elsewhere. We also use it in, in biology. And the ideas behind the plotting and doing graph work uh, comes from uh, uh, mathematics and the, and the physics. So if we were to represent the, the figures that we had um, last time, then we will get something like this. 
I just got to those figures and try to draw them. So that we have uh, uh, a decrease and increase on the y-axis. Then on x-axis, we have for uh, uh, the concentration of the uh, surrounding solution. And they uh, have used red arrow to indicate the point where you can be talking about uh, isotonic solution. So that is a point where your graph will be crossing uh, uh, a zero mark. So uh, in the future, when you'll be dealing with the graph work, this will be, uh, is be able to have this in mind. So where we have figures above zero, that will tell you where you're coming from. That is a, a hypotonic solution, where there is an in increased in size in the, the length of the tissue. And then where the levels are below, are zero or negative, then that gives you an indication of a hypertonic solution. Then where your graph crosses the zero mark, then that tells you where the isotonic concentration is. So that's where we can use the graph work uh, um, uh, to, to determine um, those uh, different figures. So it is important that you get to know that we can translate those figures into uh, graph work. Excuse me, teacher. Then, yes, please. Um, teacher. Which figures on the table do you use to present the Oh, thank you so, uh, so much. Um, I think I, 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 I should have reminded you about that. Um, the concentration of uh, the concentration of the external solution. And then the difference in the length of the tissue, the last column before the quantitative, uh, qualitative uh, statements were given, where we subtracted the original length from the final length, and that gave us uh, the difference in it, uh, in the length of all the tissues. So it is that which has been used, which has been plotted against the concentration of uh, uh, the external solution. So I brought this to uh, tell you that we can uh, analyze uh, the, 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 the numerical figures. We can translate them so on, and that will come later. I think finished with the, uh, we finished with the uh, active transport by defining what active transport is. Most importantly, we, uh, uh, we emphasize that in active transport, there is movement of substances against the concentration gradient, and uh, that involves use of uh, energy. So please, the figure, uh, the key things in that definition, we said uh, movement from uh, an area where the substance has a lower concentration to an area where uh, the concentration is high. And that therefore means there must be use of, uh, of energy. Uh, this may be across a semi-permeable uh, membrane. And then we finished with the, the application. Okay, yes. Somebody uh, asking, uh, who would like to ask a question? Hello? It, it was an interference from one of the students. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Thank you for joining. So we, we, I was saying we finished with the application of active transport, where we said it is involved with uh, involved in any in plants uh, in the uh, uptake of mineral salts in, uh, from the soil into uh, into the root hairs, and that is an important aspect in a creating uh, a concentration gradient, so that we have for movement of water molecules from the soil into uh, into the plant roots. And that has a bearing on what we're going to discuss today. 
we're saying when, because it is an active transport bit, it involves energy. When uh, the process of uh, energy generation is interfered with, then it means uh, uh, the movement of um, ions, mineral salts from the soil into the roots will be affected. And when that is affected, and then it means uptake of water from the soil uh, by the plant will be affected. And that is uh, what gave us uh, this uh, last uh, picture here that we finished with. We said where on the land, um, where we're supposed to have plants growing and that area is covered with the uh, water, uh, is flooded with water. And then uh, we shall see a situation where the air in the soil will be replaced by, uh, by the water. And when the air is replaced, it means uh, there will be no oxygen available to the plant, uh, plants, uh, plant roots for the purpose of uh, tissue respiration. When there is no tissue respiration, then there's no uptake of mineral salts from the soil into the, uh, into the roots. And therefore, uh, movement of water from the soil into the root will be uh, uh, inhibited. And because of that, those plants eventually uh, will dry up. So that is contrary to what we would expect, because we would expect that when there is a, uh, when uh, plants are in a, in, a, in a medium of water, then this will be, it's not uh, dry up, but they do. And the explanation is because of uh, interference in it, uh, the process of tissue respiration. So what are the factors that probably do affect uh, the process of active transport. Uh, we say any factor or all factors that may affect uh, uh, the process of respiration indirectly will affect uh, active transport because active transport requires energy. And this will include the, the avail availability of oxygen or the concentration of oxygen uh, and then temperature. So going back to oxygen, we see that where there's no oxygen, no tissue respiration occurs, and therefore there'll be no uh, active transport taking place. Or where there's less oxygen available, um, and then less respiration may take place, and therefore we shall have limited active transport taking place. In a similar way, we have temperature. Uh, temperature comes in because this uh, to respiration is a biological process that is uh, controlled by enzymes. So where we have factors affecting enzyme action, then indirectly, these factors will affect uh, the process of active transport. So where there's an increase or a decrease from optimum temperature, then we see the rate of tissue respiration decreasing and hence that will affect uh, the process of uh, active uh, transport. So the, uh, there is an exercise here that I'm going to leave you with. Uh, outline four differences between active transport and the uh, diffusion. That will be your take home. So today we are going to discuss about movement of materials within a plant. Uh, before I go into this, unless there is a question pertaining to the things that we discussed earlier, uh, we could uh, answer to them here. Any question that requires maybe uh, 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 clarity or something like that? Mr. Bagambisa will help me to pick a hand if there is any. Okay, okay sir. Sure. Okay, absence of any hand there is, seen. There is, means hand, we are... there is one hand of Nantongo. Oh. Angel Nantongo. Yes, Nantongo. A teacher, I was. Go ahead with your question. Teacher, I was saying I didn't attend like the end of the last lesson, so I didn't I didn't really get the explanation for the experiment of tagidity, tagidity and plasmosis in plant. So if I was requesting, I don't know if you could summarize it a little bit. 
I don't know how I can uh, summarize it in a few uh, few statements. I will try to do that. Uh, I will try to say how we can do uh, go about it. Um, do we remember what a small is? Nantongo? What it means to be plasmalized? No teacher. To be plasmalized means the plant cell and the, and the, and, the, and the, therefore the, the firmness of uh, the, the 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 cell has been reduced. Um, how does it happen? The rest of the girls will have to uh, hold with us. When we said when you place a tissue, a plant tissue, and uh, we got this by cutting, you can use a razor blade, you can use a knife, you can use a cock borer. When you cut a plant tissue, for example, from a fruit, from a stem, from the leaf, and so on, and you place it in a, a highly concentrated solution, then it is going to lose water to that solution because uh, the concentration of the cell sap inside the tissue cells is lower compared to the surrounding solution. So when that tissue loses, all the cells in the tissue lose uh, water to the surrounding because the surrounding has a higher concentration, then uh, soon the uh, the, the, the cytoplasm will uh, begin pulling away from uh, from the cell wall. If you can go back to senior one work and the, you, you recall the cell structure, the uh, plant cell structure, you remember there is a, uh, the cell loss cell wall as you move inside, then there is a cytoplasm. So when uh, the cytoplasm is, uh, is, is losing water and the, the vacuole is losing, uh, uh, is losing water. And then it means the cytoplasm together with the, the vacuole will begin shrinking. And when the cytoplasm begins pulling away from uh, the cell wall, then we talk about the cell getting plasmalized. Um, and the, how much the cytoplasm and the vacuole and so on shrink depends on the uh, how much of uh, how much the, the concentration of the surrounding solution? The more concentrated the external solution is, the more water will be drained away, will be removed from the the plant cell, and therefore the the cytoplasm is going to shrink uh, completely. So there we talk about complete plasmolysis. So we say the cell is completely plasmolized. Uh, that is what happens when uh, you place such a plant tissue in a, uh, in a highly concentrated solution. That is theoretically. But uh, uh, naturally, the aspect of uh, plasmolysis outside them may occur, especially when a plant loses more water than it absorbs. And uh, we see that happening uh, in the process of uh, uh, transpiration. Uh, where the surrounding temperatures are so high that uh, uh, um, uh, a lot of water is lost from, uh, from the plant. You remember this water lost from the plant is coming from the tissues, from the plant cells. So if it is lost at a higher rate compared to uh, it being, the water being replaced from the soil, then these uh, plant cells uh, become plasmalized. And under such circumstances, uh, we say the plant is uh, wilting. So it means uh, the, the aspect of plasmolysis occurs in a, a circumstance where a uh, plant uh, wilts naturally out there. But in the lab, we are looking at it in relation to uh, uh, solutions that we can prepare. Then for the turgidity is the, the reverse. When you place a, a tissue, an animal tissue or a plant tissue in a, uh, in a, a, a solution, that is a, a dilute, then that tissue is going to absorb water from the uh, uh, surrounding. If it is a, a plant tissue, and then it means 
the protoplasm, that is the cytoplasm and the, the vacuole are going to enlarge. Then it means they're going to uh, uh, push towards the, the, the cell wall until when it can no longer extend, until the, uh, when the cytoplasm uh, uh, can no longer extend, uh, expand because of uh, uh, the rigid uh, cell wall. And uh, we say that at that point, the cell has uh, become fully turgid. And that circumstance is seen when you place uh, a plant in, the, uh, in the, a medium that has a, a pure water or a, a, in a medium that has lower concentra uh, concentration. And uh, that's what uh, we try to demonstrate in uh, the experiment that you, you, you missed. And the figures were given, and it is from those figures that uh, I try to tell you that we can generate uh, uh, graph work. So that is uh, the brief that probably we could uh, give to you at this moment. Um, we pray that uh, uh, we have a stable um, network so that we don't keep on losing people from the lessons. Um, I guess that was the only um, request. I think we can go to where we want it to go. Uh, Mr. Bagambisa, is there another? Uh, I don't. Yes, please. There is a one more question. Yes, sir. Okay. In the, the previous lesson. Yes, please. In the previous lesson, we ended class today, so we never had the opportunity to ask questions at the end. But then I never really understood the concept of things that you go over there. You, you, you never understood the concept of what? Uh, soil. Yes. Okay, uh, uh, right now, um, we, we are having uh, experience of uh, excessive rains. Uh, where I am right now, uh, uh, all the soil is uh, soaked in water uh, and the, uh, the rain water is not draining through. So it means the soils are getting saturated with a lot of water. In 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 Bududa, in uh, in the north, in in the Kasese sub region, and so on, we experience uh, uh, the country is experiencing uh, excessive rainwater, and the, when it experiences excess rain, it means the soils get saturated with water, and the, in that circumstance, the uh, the surface water may not percolate, may not uh, drain down into the uh, into the into the soil, and when that happens, it means the spaces in between the soil particles, which originally were filled with the air, if you can go back to uh, the topic of soil and then the components, you remember one of the components of soil is the, is air, so it means those spaces that were filled with the air eventually will be replaced with water. And the plants, plant roots get air for respiration from the soil. Now, when the air in the soil is replaced by water, then it means the plant roots will be unable to get uh, air from the soil. And yet we know that uh, the, 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 the plants need to absorb mineral salts from uh, the soil. And one of the relevance of the mineral salts from the soil into the roots is, is to create a, a concentration difference. So that is more concentration of salts in the roots than in the surrounding solution. And the relevance of that is that it will result into an influx movement of water from the soil into the plant roots. So it means when no Amino salts, no more amino salts are absorbed into the roots. Then it means there will be no uh, 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 creation of, uh, there will be no creation of uh, or maintenance of the concentration gradient. And, the, and the, so it therefore means that this 
plant through the, uh, from the soil as much as it is surrounded by uh, the water itself. Uh, the reason behind that is because there was no tissue respiration. There was no process of respiration that all can't. Because for respiration to take place, it requires oxygen, which oxygen was replaced by, or gets replaced by, uh, by water. So this is circumstance that happens in water flooded areas, which are meant to be dry uh, on the lands. However, there are those plants that uh, naturally grow in the, in the, in the water, uh, water bodies. So those will not be affected. But for plants that grow on land, uh, 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 normally they will be affected because of that process of tissue respiration that is affected and the, uh, the process of uh, taking up mineral salts from the soil is affected, and therefore uh, absorption of water from the soil will be stopped. And when the plant no longer takes up water from the soil into the plant itself, then uh, naturally this plant is going to dry up. And that's what happens in the areas that get flooded with water, areas which are meant to be dry, land, dry land, and, uh, and get flooded with the water. And uh, that's what we are likely to experience soon in most of the parts of the country, because uh, the soils, the areas are getting flooded with water. Yes, thank you, sir. All right. Um, uh, let's uh, go to the movement of materials uh, in, uh, pl uh, in a plant. Uh, that is an illustration. And we are seeing, uh, saying that these materials could be coming from the soil, going up the plants, or could be coming from up the plants. Especially the leaves, then they are taken to the other parts of uh, the plants. So we say the plants have for uh, the vascular systems uh, or vascular tissues to transport uh, uh, substances. Uh, these vascular tissues include the xylem, which transports water. The root has uh, two major um, uh, uh, parts that are important. We have the cortex and the pith, and the and the and the, the transfection uh, trans, uh, transverse section or the cross section uh, of the root reveals these two important uh, uh, parts. We have uh, the cortex, which is the larger part, and then the central cylinder, which is the inner part of, uh, uh, found uh, inner part of uh, uh, the, 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 the cortex. So when you're moving from outside to the interior, you pass through uh, the cortex to reach the, the central cylinder. And the central cylinder, that's where the vascular tissues are located. So the outer part of the cortex, that is where we have the, uh, the epidermis or the, the peripheral layer. So I uh, suppose we're able to recall this. 
from our senior one work, uh, the, the outer part, which is uh, made up of uh, the piliferous layer, which, give, uh, which gives rise to the epidermis. So on uh, the piliferous, and then uh, um, uh, I, uh, on slightly younger part of uh, the root, but uh, on the older part of the root, you have the epidermis. So the peripheral layer gives rise to the epidermis. So uh, this layer contains the root hairs. And then as you penetrate the, um, uh, the, the, the next part beneath the epidermis is where we have the cord. The central part is central cell and the, and the details of it in another view will give you this here. Um, we should be able to recall these two structures, the cross-section of uh, the dicot root and the, the cross-section of uh, the monocot root. Uh, that is basically uh, all of uh, rather senior one work. So please remember these important features here. We have the root here, then we have the cortex, we have the xylem, and we have the phloem. The xylem and the phloem, we said earlier, this constitute the, the vascular tissue, and they are the ones involved with the, the transport of uh, 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 substances here. Um, the other bits will be to give differences between the internal structure of the dicot uh, root and the, the monocot root. That is basically senior one work, which I guess you should be able to do that. To remind us, immunosols, the, the outermost layer, uh, it protects um, this uh, part of the root against mechanical damage. And then it also uh, prevents or protects against loss of water from uh, the cortex. So it is the layer that gives rise to the epidermis. And then we have the cortex and chyma cells, and they, because there are many, and they, and they eventually they will absorb water, then they tend to provide mechanical support to the root. Xylem and phloem, I think we gave uh, the functions early. Then the campium tissue is in that which is normally found in between the phloem and the, the xylem. So it gives rise to uh, new cells of the xylem and the phloem. And uh, when you'll be dealing with the growth and development, you will be talking about uh, what we call circle, the ability of this tissue to develop and flow in. So the campium retains the ability of uh, 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 dividing the process of cell division. So because of that, it's able to give rise to new flowing cells and new xylem cells. Uh, those tissues are able to increase and uh, provide uh, more support uh, besides being used for uh, transportation. Then the piece is uh, the, 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 uh, the innermost part uh, found especially in the monocot root. And uh, in here, we have for um, uh, storage of uh, food, Substances. Again, it is made up of uh, parenchyma uh, cells. These are functions that you should be able to recall here. One is uh, to provide the support, and then two, it's harmful substances. So, again, this uh, could be generated from uh, the structures that you saw earlier uh, between uh, the dicot root and the, the monocot root. 
So from that, the Daikoti road has no peace because the central part is occupied by uh, by the, the, the asylum vessel. And then the Monocot road has a peace occupying the center. Uh, the Daikoti road again uh, has a campium that forms a kind of rink as opposed to the monocot route, uh, where they don't form uh, a ring, the campium ring uh, is not formed. And then finally, we have uh, in Daikot route, the xylem in the form of a star. And then for the monocot, uh, the xylem and the phloem tend to alternate, uh, forming uh, a ring. Uh, uh, in that uh, uh, in the root. So those are some few differences that we can uh, generate uh, from the structure of uh, uh, the roots. So this is where our interest is. What then happens uh, in, in the the root here uh, in relation to uh, the, the 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 uptake of water from the soil? So water absorption by the root hairs. So we are saying this is a, a continuous uh, 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 process. It is a process uh, that is uh, uh, described as being a stream. It's like a, a flow of water, a continuous flow of water from the, the source to the, to, the, to the end. So the uptake of water is, um, uh, is a continuous stream through the plant. And the, the root hairs in the soil uh, are important in this regard. Uh, these root hairs are surrounded uh, with water, with the soil water. And the, the soil water, of course, contains uh, mineral salts. Uh, that's like also inside the root, uh, root hair, we have uh, the vacuole that uh, contains the cell sap. So the soil solution. Uh, once inside the root here, vacuum uh, is called the cell sap and has a lower osmotic potential than in the soil solution. So the membrane of the root here is semi permeable. That is basically some big, uh, background. So the above uh, conditions enable water to move from the soil uh, uh, through the by the process of osmosis. Allow me to explain here a bit. Have this mental piece so, uh, 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 in the surrounding soil, there is water. This water contains mineral salts and the, the root hairs grow into this uh, solution or uh, found in the, the soil. The solution found in the soil is made uh, uh, is constituted by water that contains mineral salts. And in the root hair, we have the, the cytoplasm and we have uh, the cell uh, and the, 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 uh, the vacuole. And the, the, the vacuole contains the cell sap, which has a higher concentration meaning that there is a difference in the concentration between the cell sap of the root hairs and the surrounding uh, 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 soil solution. And because of this difference in the concentration, water moves from the soil into the root hair by the process of osmosis. And once it is in the root hair, and then it will uh, uh, be taken in, um, into the cortex uh, by the same process of um, osmosis until when it reaches uh, the, the, uh, the xylem vessels. If you can have a look at this,
the line that the blue line is showing for us uh, the direction that will be followed by the water. Once water is taken into the uh, into the root here, then it will find its way through the cortex cells of the cortex until when it reaches um, the the uh, the xylem, and because that is the the vessel that is supposed to uh, transport the water uh, up the stream. So there are different routes that could be followed here. From uh, the root here uh, through the cortex. So through the cortex, it could be following the cell walls of the cortex cells, or it could be moving through the vacuoles of the different cells or the water could move through uh,